I want to talk a little bit about some of the inconsistencies we're finding with our testing. Uh, mainly, the one big one is the full dump, uh, meaning your flash is discharging every bit of power that it has. I mean, we're getting other ones. We're getting like pre-flashes instead of full a pre-flash and a full flash. Um, we're getting some erratic TTL settings where we go up one stop or two stops in our flash comp and it might actually output a negative result. But the most common problem we're having again is the full dump. And so common, especially with the radio popper system, I mean we're getting with the pocket wizard, I mean, excuse me, especially with the pocket wizard system, we're getting them some with the radio popper system too, but definitely not near as much. If we got more when we got to the extended range, just the pre-flash with the radio popper system. But we got the full dump so much on the pocket wizard system, we wanted to figure out why this was happening. So we made some phone calls and we talked to some techno geeks and basically the Canon system was built upon when the master is communicating with the wireless unit. It's basically just binary numbers and binary numbers are zeros and ones in a certain set format. Um, when you're at the full range of your communications between the Pocket Wizards TT1 and TT5 units, some of these ones are not received. And when you miss one or two of the ones in the binary code communications, for some reason the way Canon is developed and designed, it wants to default to the more power, giving you the result of a full dump. Now, you know what the problem is and that's great, you can solve it, but here's my main problem that I found with the full dump in an actual real world situation. A full dump is not a one to one power. It's not exactly what the Canon considers a full power discharge in a controlled environment. It's actually every bit of flash that that Canon flash can discharge. And when it happens, you'll even see, you'll hear the flash go off, it'll be bright, it'll actually get hot, and it takes a long time to recharge. So long, that you're going to miss not only the shot you just took obviously because it'll be overexposed but it'll take 15 30 seconds to recharge your your flash so that you're dead for 15 30 seconds you literally cannot take another image for 15 30 seconds while that flash is recharges to me that's the greatest problem i'm having with the pocket wizard new system and it's really weird i mean i'm getting them at 15 feet, 20 feet, then when we, we pushed it, we, we hooked on the 430X2, and we went up to 120 feet, and then we started getting them. And that's not a problem, but my problem was is when I had a 580X2 with the offshoot camera cord, and we had people walking between me and the receiver and transmitter, and we were only 10, 15 feet away. Um, pretty normal working conditions for a professional photographer if you shoot seniors, especially if you shoot weddings and receptions. Um, that's when I was having some major problems. If it was direct line of sight, 10, 15 feet, it worked most of the time um, with pretty consistent results. But when you started putting any, any other real world environment situations in the middle of that flash or the transmitter and receiver, I started getting the full dumps. So, all right, a quick summary of everything we tried. Today we tried the Pocket Wizard Mini TT1 as our transmitter on a Canon 40D with a 7200 flash um, IS28, I mean lens, without a flash mounted on top of the Mini. For our wireless unit, we had a Canon 580EX2 to begin with, and we had it mounted directly onto the Flex TT5, direct line of sight, we got 35 feet. As the max range before we started getting TTL, erratic results, we started getting just pre-fires without main fires, and we started getting full dumps. When we added the offshoot camera cord as the manual told us to get optimal range out of that setup, it kind of surprised us. We only got an extra five feet out of the total range. So a total of 40 feet with the 580X2 and the offshoot camera cord to the um, Flex TT5 mounted down the light stand as shown in the promo video. Um, then when we put on the 430EX2 as our wireless unit, took the 582 off and put the 430EX2 on, mounted directly onto the um, Flex TT5. We actually got some decent range, 120 feet. It was our max range we got out of it before we started again seeing the pre-flash and mainly the full dumps out of the 430. Now that's nice, but my problem again, uh, we shoot high speed sync in the middle of the day and the 430s don't have near as much power as the 580X2s. So I have that problem. Now what we found interesting, and it was pure by accident, when Cody was being our model and a car was coming in the middle of the road and Cody grabbed the light stand with the 
wireless flash on it with the 580X2 mounted on it with the offshoot camera cord, I actually got better range. He, his body grounded the system and we got up to 120 feet. Of course, that's not real realistic in the real world unless you had an assistant not only place the light stand where you wanted to place it, but also you'd have to have that individual hold the transmitter, I mean, excuse me, the receiver, the TT5, away from the um, light stand. So that was it. That's our main range. We basically, get, um, without the offshoot camera cord, we got 35 feet. With it, we got 40 feet. And then with the 430EX2, we got 120 feet. Uh, with someone holding it, we got about 120 feet out of the other system, too. Now with the Radio Popper PX units and system, we actually um, used the 580EX2 as a master and slave. And again, on the 40D 7200IS lens, um, we got around 680 feet on the exact same setup, same road and everything, before we started seeing mainly pre-flashes. I don't think we got a full dump um, out of our flashes. So we got started getting pre-flashes, and then some curiosity happened, which um, we just kind of did just to, because we found that the Pocket Wizard system wouldn't do manual adjustments, meaning I would adjust whatever setting from 116 to even higher, maybe to one to one on the back of my master flash in manual mode, in my flash being on manual mode, the wireless flash would adjust itself. We could not get that to work with the Pocket Wizard system. So we wanted to test that out with the Radio Popper PX units since it would do this. And we actually found out that we got more range, about 100 feet more, almost to 800 feet on that same road when we went to manual method. Are not, there's actually, there are no electrical connections to your radio popper unit or the PX unit and your actual flash. Um, the, way they, the way your flashes communicate are through a series of high speed blinks of light. Um, and basically the radio popper picks up on when it picks up the electromagnetic pulse created by each of those blinks of light. Each of those blinks of light um, creates, in a sense, a, a magnetic pulse at your flash head. And that is what the radio popper actually reads, is that magnetic pulse. And this actually has no, um, no bearing whatsoever on the radio noise or the ambient radio noise that's emitted by the flash units that uh, seems to be detrimental to the Pocket Witcher's device. All right, and for you uh, really uh, techy people out there, uh, let's discuss a little bit the uh, frequencies that these uh, two devices operate on. Uh, basically, the Pocket Wizards device wor devices work on about a 344 megahertz range. The Radio Poppers use a, they work around the 916 megahertz range. Mm -hmm. Electronic devices in general, including your camera, your flash, um, things around the house, they tend to emit uh, more noise or interference in the lower frequency ranges. In our tests, it's, it's obvious that we get quite a bit um, more range from the radio popper. It's right in the middle of the spectrum, okay? You're not gonna see a lot of interference from, um, from other equipment like your camera, your flash. Pocket Wizards device, they may see a little more interference from um, other electronic devices just because their, um, their frequency is, is a little bit on the low side. Since we're talking about frequencies and really getting into the, uh, the geeky side of frequencies, um, when you change a channel on the Pocket Wizard, you're not actually changing the frequency, you're changing the coding within that channel, and that's actually how it communicates. With the radio popper units, they have 16 channels, and each channel it's actually 16 different frequencies. Uh, that, that can be a big advantage if you're at a venue or maybe the um, DJ has a, some wireless equipment, maybe a lapel mic or some wireless microphones. Sometimes that can affect your, um, your, your equipment, and with the radio poppers, you are able to actually change a channel and get on a totally different frequency and uh, maybe avoid any interference from uh, other, other devices in the area. And by the way, if you think I had a hard time explaining that, you should have seen Mike try to explain that last technical part. <laughs>